Welcome to the realm of intoxicating flavors and head-banging beer reviews. What's up, everybody? It's the Ginger Yeti, and I'm checking in from the road. I'm enjoying my uh, afternoon off here just outside of Dayton, Ohio. Tomorrow we have a show at the uh, Rose Music Center in Huber Heights. I think it's called the Rose Music Center at the Heights. And I've got everything done for the day, so I'm getting in a couple beers. And what I have for you today is the Pink Pineapple Haze. And this is from Huss Brewing out of, where was it out of? Somewhere in Phoenix. I should have probably wrote that down, but I'm struggling here today. Uh, hopefully it says somewhere on the can. So let's just look at the can. Uh, it says, Huss Brewing Company Pink Pineapple Haze. On the side of the can, in this awful lighting, it's 6.6% alcohol, handcrafted. Sometimes you need a little extra help. Brewed with love by 24 people who care. Thank you. Since I have the flashlight out, let's see. It's um, brewed and canned by Hus Brewing Company out of Temple, Tempe, Arizona. I am just struggling today. My allergies have me all messed up. We just finished three in a row, kind of exhausted. And I'm getting some beers in because sometimes you just need a break. Back to the can here. I'm just going to use my flashlight to read it. And sorry, hopefully I can edit out this echo, but if I can't, sorry about that. It says, this is Husk Brewing Company Pink Pineapple Haze. On the back of the can, it says, this hazy IPA blends luscious pineapple and prickly pear puree with Eldorado and Azaka hops delivering a tantalizing explosion of tropical fruit punch that captivates your palate with exotic flavors. And no date code on the bottom, nothing about IBUs. On untapped, it says it was 6.6% alcohol with 24 IBUs. Now, I've actually had a, quite a few beers lately with prickly pear in them. Prickly pear seems to be uh, uh, an ingredient that's starting to creep up more and more in beers. You're starting to see it more and more in beers and I never knew until quite recently that there's like edible parts of the prickly pear. I actually have some prickly pears growing in, in pots at my house. I got them from a beer day with TK. I got a neighbor down the street that has prickly pears just out in his flower bed. And it's crazy that they survive. They like, looks like they completely die during winter and they come back every summer. It's wild. I mean, they never get as big as you see out in the desert or you see in Arizona, but it's still cool. And they even flower, which is really neat. And I just went off on a tangent about prickly pear. Wow, I'm just all over the place tonight. I picked this beer up at uh, Papago Brewing Company when I was there in, was it Mesa, Arizona, uh, a couple weeks ago. The days run together. But I got this for $2.25 for carryout. It's a big 16-ounce can of a craft beer for $2.25. Again, if you're ever in the Mesa, Arizona area, go to Papago Brewing. If for nothing else... They've got a small but good selection of carryout beers, and they're super cheap. I've never seen beers that cheap anywhere, beer store, anywhere, as cheap as they are at Papa Go Brewing. It's amazing how cheap they are. I mean, if you've watched some of my other videos, I was picking up beer, cans of beer for $1.50, $2. Again, two and a quarter for this, this is, that's crazy. I keep going off on tangents again. So let's just get in this beer. Maybe I can talk about the beer and drink it and try it without going off on some wild rabbit chase again got the iconic plastic cup and we're gonna pour it right in there a beer advocate it gets a 3.74 with 780 check-ins beer advocate on untapped it gets 3.74 780 check-ins on beer advocate it's an na man i should just go to bed that is pink that is definitely pink that's not gonna be on the SRM charts at all. I know the lighting's terrible in here. Oh, I got my flashlight. I mean, that is not as pink as I thought it was. It's kind of a grapefruit, uh, ruby red grapefruit color. There are some floaters in there. You can't really see through this at all. That looks kind of chunky and thick. There's a small white frothy head. It's dissipating quickly. I suppose I should try to see what it smells like. I mean, with my allergies going on right now and everything else, my nose is a wreck, but we're gonna try it anyways.
getting some faint hop smell, breaking through the congestion. That's twice in a row I've stuck my nose directly in the beer. I really just need to go to bed. Suffering for my art. So let's take a drink. I'm sure that's gonna help me out. Cheers, everybody. Me embodied, get a little bit of the carbonation. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. It's balanced out by the hops. There's some citrusiness to it. Almost, I mean, it's almost like a pink grapefruit kind of flavor to it. Yeah, like, like, like pink grapefruit citrusiness with some sweetness and just the slightest bit of hop bitterness in the back end. It all balances out really well. And this is a tasty beer. Don't know this is 6.6% alcohol at all. Man, you could crush this. This is a good beer. I give this a big horns up. This is a nice, well done beer. And for $2.25, I would buy this all day long. For these big cans, that's a steal. This is a good beer. I hope you think my video is a good video. Sorry about all the nonsense. I don't know what I'm doing tonight, but it's definitely an adventure trying to do some of these beer videos today. And as always, embrace the adventure.